Sutra, model for the Ananda as you understand it. The tongue and flavors create the conditions that produce the tongue consciousness. Is the consciousness produced because of the tongue, such that the tongue is its realm, or is it produced because of the flavors, such that the flavors are its realm? Commentary: The Buddha calls out to Ananda. Moreover, Ananda, as you understand it, in the past when I explained the Buddha Dharma in, of the small vehicle to you, the provision of vehicle in order to teach and transform all living beings. I spoke about the realms of the tongue and the flavors among the eighteen realms. The tongue and flavors create the conditions that produce the tongue consciousness. Together, they create the conditions. By having a tongue, one recognizes tastes. When there are flavors, the tongue is able to know of them. They work together to produce the tongue consciousness. The organ of the tongue and the defiling objects of flavors. Stand paired with one another in their midst, and in their midst is produced a mind which makes distinctions. This is called the tongue consciousness. But ultimately, where are the bounds of the tongue consciousness? Is the consciousness produced because of the tongue, such that the tongue is its realm? Is the consciousness born from the tongue, or does the tongue consciousness use the tongue to form its boundaries, or is it produced because of the flavors, such that the flavors are its realm? Perhaps it is produced because of the defiling object of flavors, and takes the defiling object of flavors as its boundaries. Tell me, Ananda. Sutra. Suppose Ananda that. It were produced because of the tongue. Then all the sugar cane, black plums, huanglian, salt, white ginger, ginger and cassia, in the world would be entirely without flavor. Also, when you taste your own tongue, is it sweet or bitter? Commentary: Suppose Ananda that it were produced because of the tongue. If the tongue consciousness were produced because of the tongue organ. Then all the sugar cane, black plums. These are the sour plums mentioned earlier, when the Buddha said that just thinking of them caused the mouth to water. Huanglian cactus japonica is an extremely bitter medicine. Salt simply refers to the kind of salt we eat. White ginger, asalun siabodi, is another kind of medicine. Ginger and cassia are also herbal medicines. All such substances in the world would be entirely without flavor. If the tongue consciousness were produced because of the tongue, the flavors of these medicines would not exist. Also, when you taste your own tongue, is it sweet or bitter? Further, you say that the tongue consciousness comes from the tongue. Try it then. What does your tongue taste like? The Buddha asks Ananda, "Sutra, suppose the nature of your tongue were bitter, then what would it be that tasted the tongue? Since the tongue cannot taste itself, who would have the sense of taste? If the nature of the tongue were not bitter, there would be no flavor engendered by it. Thus, how could a realm be established? Commentary: Suppose the nature of your tongue were bitter." Ananda, if upon tasting your tongue you found it was bitter, what would be what would it be that tasted the tongue? Since the tongue cannot taste itself, who would have the sense of taste? Who would be who was aware of and knew of the tongue consciousness? If the nature of the tongue were not bitter, there would be no flavor engendered by it. If the tongue had no flavor, then the tongue itself. Would not produce a flavor. Thus, how could a realm be established? Then, where would the realm of the tongue consciousness be established? Where would it be? Sutra. If it were produced because of flavor, the consciousness itself would be a flavor. The case would be the same as with a tongue organ being unable to taste itself. How could the consciousness know whether it had flavor or not? Commentary: If it were produced because of flavor, 
the consciousness itself would be a flavor. If you say that flavor produces the consciousness, then the consciousness is also becomes a flavor. Then the case would be the same as with the tongue organ being unable to taste itself. You say the consciousness is itself a flavor, but a flavor cannot know its own flavor, just as the tongue cannot taste itself. Bitterness, for example, could not taste itself and say, Oh, I am bitter. Flavor basically has no knowing awareness. How could the consciousness know whether it has flavor or not? Since the flavor is without a knowing awareness, how could it have within it a consciousness which makes distinctions? How could it tell whether it was sweet or bitter? Flavor cannot taste itself. Sutra. Moreover, flavors do not all come from one thing. Since flavors are produced from many things, the consciousness would have many substances. Commentary. You say the consciousness is produced from the flavor, but there is not just one kind of flavor. There are many kinds. Moreover, flavors do not all come from one thing. Sour, sweet, bitter, hot, salty. There are many kinds of flavors produced from many things. For instance, hot peppers are hot, black plums are sour, sugar cane is sweet, huang lian is bitter, salt is of cold salty. Since flavors are produced from many things, the consciousness would have many substances, but the substance of consciousness does not have a variety of natures. This passage points to the fact that consciousness is unchanging. It occurs with conditions and does not change. It is unchanging and yet it occurs with conditions. Thus, although there are many kinds of things which produce many kinds of flavors, the tongue consciousness does not imitate flavors in having so many substances. Shakyamuni Buddha is explaining this way intentionally in order to cause Ananda to understand that the consciousness is produced from the treasury of the third come one. It is not a particular flavor or the tongue that produces the consciousness. Sutra so suppose that the consciousness were of a single substance and that the substance was definitely produced from flavor. Then, when salt, bland, sweet, and pungent were combined, their various differences would change into a single flavor and there would be no distinctions among them. Commentary Suppose that the consciousness were of a single substance and that the substance was definitely produced from flavor. It was stated above that one substance cannot be produced from many flavors. However, if we say that the consciousness is nevertheless one substance and that it is produced from the various flavors, then we have to say that the various flavors combine and change into a single flavor. Then, while salt, bland, sweet, and pungent were combined, their various differences would change into a single flavor. In that case, there will be no distinctions among them. There wouldn't be all those flavors of sour, sweet, bitter, hot, and salty. Pungent here means hot, bland means tasteless. They would be a single flavor. Sutra, if there were no distinctions, it could not be called consciousness. So how could it further be called the realm of tongue, flavor, and consciousness? Commentary, a lot of flavors are combined into one substance and each loses its original flavor. For instance, if you add something sweet to hot things, they are no longer as hot and the sweet is no longer as sweet. Their flavors change. If you combine sour, sweet, bitter, hot, and salty together, you alter their original flavor. So when the original flavors disappear, they change into a single flavor. And within this flavor, nothing can be distinguished. If there were no distinctions, if there were no flavor to be distinguished, it could not be called consciousness. The consciousness makes distinctions, but here it does not make distinctions. It cannot be called consciousness. It can't be, it can even be called consciousness, 
So how could he further be called the realm of tongue, flavor, and consciousness? He could not. Sutra, nor can it be that empty space produces your conscious awareness. Commentary: Your tongue consciousness cannot be produced from empty space. It can't be that empty space produces your consciousness, your mind. Sutra: The tongue and flavors could not combine without each losing its basic nature. How could a realm be produced? Commentary: The tongue and flavors could not combine without each losing its basic nature. If the tongue and flavors combine, neither would retain a nature. How could a realm be produced? How can you give it a name and set it up as a tongue consciousness realm? You cannot. Sutra. Therefore, you should know that as to the tongue and flavors being the conditions that produce the realm of tongue consciousness, none of the three places exists. Thus, the three aspects of the tongue, flavors, and the realm of the tongue do not have their origin in causes and conditions. Nor do their natures arise spontaneously. Commentary. Therefore, because of this, Ananda, you should know that, as to the tongue and flavors being the conditions, as to the tongue and flavors to get the producing the causes and conditions that produce the realm of tongue consciousness, none of the three places exist. You say that the consciousness is produced from the tongue organ, but it isn't. You say it is produced from the defined objects of flavors, but it isn't. Nor can it be produced from the tongue consciousness itself. Thus, none of those three places has a substantial nature. Thus, if it is, it is explained this way, you can realize that the three aspects of the tongue flavors and the realm of the tongue, the consciousness realm of the tongue, these three do not have their origin. In causes and conditions, nor do their natures arise spontaneously. They are not produced from causes and conditions, nor are they produced spontaneously. For them to be produced from causes and conditions would be for them to fall into the realm of existence. For them to be produced spontaneously would be for them to fall into the realm of emptiness. Emptiness and existence are two kinds. And they are not the completed meaning of the middle way. They are the causes and conditions touched by the provisional teaching, and the spontaneity touched by adherence of externalist sects. Where does the tongue consciousness realm ultimately come from? It too is a manifestation of the wonderful nature of true suchness of the treasury of the first come one. Sutra. Moreover, Ananda, as you understand it, the body and objects of touch create the conditions that produce the body consciousness. Is this consciousness produced because of the body, such that the body is its realm, or is it produced because of objects of touch, such that objects of touch are its realm? Commentary. Moreover, Ananda, as you understand it. In the doctrines of the small vihāgo, the provisional teaching which you have heard, the body and objects of touch create the conditions that produce the body consciousness. The organ of the body and the defiling objects of touch combine to produce conditions, and the existence of these conditions produces the body consciousness. The distinction of the body consciousness is produced. Is this consciousness produced because of the body? Does this consciousness exist because of the body produced it, such that the body is its realm? Is the body the realm of the body consciousness, or is it produced because of objects of touch, or is it the defining objects of touch that produce the consciousness which makes distinctions? Sutra. Suppose Ananda that it were produced. Because of the body, when there was no awareness of the two conditions of contact with and separation from objects of touch, what would the body be conscious of? Commentary: Suppose Ananda, that it were produced because of the body. Suppose you say the consciousness is produced because of the body. When there was no awareness 
of the two conditions of contact with and separation from objects of touch, what would the body be conscious of? What about the case when there is neither unity nor separation for the body to be conscious of? What is the body aware of then? What consciousness would it have? Thus, how can the consciousness be produced only from the body? Sutra, suppose it were produced because of objects of touch, then you would not need your body. Without a body, what could perceive contact with and separation from objects of touch? Commentary, suppose it were produced because of objects of touch. If you say the objects of touch produce the consciousness, then it is not produced from your body. Then you would not need your body. It would have nothing to do with your body. Without a body, what could perceive contact with and separation from objects of touch? Is there anyone in this world who can say, it is not I who experience objects of touch with my body, but another body which perceives the sensation of unity and separation. This doesn't happen either. Why do I say that? Sutra, Ananda, things do not perceive objects of touch. It is the body that perceives objects of touch. Commentary, Ananda, you should know that things do not perceive objects of touch. It is the body that perceives objects of um, touch. Things do not have the power of awareness. They do not have the nature that makes distinctions. You say the consciousness that makes distinctions comes from things. This is a mistake. If you can perceive the existence of objects of touch, the defiling objects of touch, it is your body that perceives them. If it were not for your body, how would you know there have been objects of touch? It is because objects of touch come into contact with your body that there is that awareness. Ultimately, however, where is the realm of the consciousness that is produced in the midst of the objects of touch and your body? Is it in the body or is it in objects of touch? Sutra, what the body knows is objects of touch and what is aware of objects of touch is the body. What is objects of touch is not the body and what is the body is not objects of touch. Commentary, what is the body knows is objects of touch. The consciousness which makes distinctions is aware of objects of touch by means of your body. The body's awareness comes about because of objects of touch. Thus, contact is what is known and the body is what experiences contact. So, your consciousness knows of the body because of contact. The awareness arises from the contact. And what is aware of objects of touch is the body. Awareness here refers to consciousness. With the consciousness, you are aware of a sensation of touch and that sensation of touch comes from the body. However, what is objects of touch is not the body. To speak of the body by itself, the defining object of touch is simply in the defining objects of touch. It is not the body. And what is the body is not objects of touch. And your body is not the defining objects of touch. The two work together, but they are not the same. So if we try to determine exactly where between your body and the defining objects of touch, the consciousness is. If you say that the consciousness definitely lies on one side or the other, either on the side of the body or on the side of the objects of touch, you won't be able to find it. If you cannot find it between the body and the objects of touch, then you fail to locate the actual place of the consciousness. So where will you go to find the consciousness? Sutra, the two characteristics of body and objects of touch are basically without a location. If it united with the body, it would be the body's own substance and nature. If it were apart from the body, it would have the same appearance as empty space. Commentary, the two characteristics of body and objects of touch have no fixed location. You try to find out where the characteristic of the body and the characteristic of objects of touch ultimately are, but they are basically without a location. If it united with the body, 
it would be the body's own substance and nature if the consciousness reunites with the body. If you want to say that the consciousness is produced from the body, then it would be the body's own substance and nature. If it were apart from the body, it would have the same appearance as empty space. Suppose you say the consciousness is apart from the body, but what is apart from the body is empty space, and you cannot find the appearance of the consciousness. So the consciousness does not have the characteristic of a substance. Sutra. Since the inside and the outside don't stand up, how can one set up a middle? The middle cannot be set up either. The inside and the outside are by nature empty. From what realm then is your consciousness born? Commentary. Since the inside and the outside don't stand up, how can one set up a middle? You say the consciousness is inside, but it is not. You say it is outside, but it is not. You say it is in the defining objects of touch, but it is not. You say it is in the organ of the body, but it is not. Since then, neither the inside nor the outside exist. How can there be an appearance of a middle? The middle cannot be set up either. You cannot distinguish where the middle is. The inside and the outside are by nature empty. There isn't any middle and there isn't any inside or outside. They are by nature empty. From what realm? From what realm? Then is your consciousness born? There isn't any inside, there isn't any outside, and there isn't any middle. So ultimately, what does the consciousness make use of to form its realm? Where can it set up a realm? Sutra. Therefore, you should know that as to the body and objects of touch being the conditions that produce the realm of body consciousness, none of the three places exist. Thus, the three aspects of the body, objects of touch, and the realm of the body do not have their origin in causes and conditions, nor do their natures arise spontaneously. Commentary. The various principles explained above demonstrate that the realm of the body consciousness cannot be found. It has no realm. Therefore, you should know because of this, Ananda, you ought to know that as to the body and contact being the conditions, the body and the defining objects of touch being the mutual conditions that produce the realm of body consciousness earlier in the teaching of the provision of the high goal, the principle of the production of the body consciousness realm was discussed. None of the three places exist. Thus, the three aspects of the body, objects of touch, the organ of the body, and the defining objects of touch, and the realm of the body, the realm of body consciousness, these three do not have their origin in causes and conditions, nor do their natures arise spontaneously. They are a manifestation from within the nature of the treasury of the first common. You cannot find a fixed location for them, so you should not compare the teaching methods of the provisional vehicle to the true and actual principles of the actual vehicle. What was spoken before was the expanding Dharma. The Dharma which is now spoken is the number one truth. It is the teaching method of the complete meaning of the middle way, which is totally different from the former Dharma door. The five skandhas, the six entrances, the twelve places, and the eighteen realms, all these various dramas do not arise from causes and conditions, nor do their natures arise spontaneously. Earlier, the Buddha used the drama of causes and conditions to smash theories of spontaneity propounded by externalist sects. That is why Ananda became attached to the drama of causes and conditions and couldn't reject it. He couldn't give up the idea. He thought that the drama which had been spoken previously could not be answered, could not be changed. Why is the Buddha now negating the principles which he previously explained? For the Buddha himself not to recognize the drama which he himself had spoken before is to contradict himself, isn't it? He contradicts what he himself said. 
It is at this point that Ananda gives rise to all kinds of doubts and keeps coming up with questions. So now the Buddha tells Ananda that he explained the drama of causes and conditions earlier. In order to counteract the externalist sect's explanation of the drama of spontaneity, it was certainly not ultimate. It was certainly not the essential drama door. Now the complete meaning of the middle way, the number one truth, the genuine drama door is it being explained. And the formal methods cannot be used. You cannot continue to hold on to them. Ananda had not understood that, so he kept asking questions.